guys, it's Amalia, and today we are doing a what I eat in a day video. Something that I've heard a lot throughout my life in my interactions with people outside of the Orthodox Jewish community has been that there's a lot of confusion surrounding what is and what isn't kosher food. I remember very vividly as a child that I had a non-Jewish friend who asked me um, whether I could eat ice cream because is ice cream kosher or not? And obviously this was just a very like child childlike question however as i've grown older and also um I, i've seen it in my own life as well as in media that people tend to not really have a good idea of what kosher actually is um and they start to think that it's like a set group of like jewish cuisine as opposed to a form of of religious dietary restrictions and so i thought that a fun educational way to explore what a kosher um, orthodox diet is and isn't is just to show you a day in my life. It's really important for me um, just personally to make note of the fact that this is not supposed to be a way of showing you a healthy diet or a balanced diet. This is what I eat in a day um, on like a typical day in my week and it changes day by day for me. Uh, and in addition, it's also meaning my personal diet, and part of the point of this video is that my personal diet as an Orthodox Jew can look very different than another Orthodox Jew's diet, even if we're all keeping to kosher standards. In this video, I'm not planning on really touching on the nuance of, an, or of a kosher diet in terms of the actual laws and regulation. Rather, I'm really just looking um, to show what a typical day for me as an Orthodox Jewish woman looks like uh, based on my food. I hope you enjoy this video and that to some extent it provides an educational message. So I usually don't have too much of a specific routine for breakfast. Um, today I'm just having a cup of tea. Sometimes I have tea, sometimes I... Um, sometimes I drink coffee and sometimes I want something a little heavier, but frequently I just find myself a little nauseous in the mornings and I'm not in the mood to eat something like right when I wake up um, or right after I daven more specifically. Um, and so I'll wait until uh, a little bit later in the morning and usually have like a snack while I'm at school. Today I'm, um, today I'm studying because I'm in finals though, so that's not going to be the case today. I'll probably have a snack while studying. So I just finished up with a driving lesson that I had this morning and now that I'm back, um, I am a little hungry and I think I'll also make some more tea. I'm just gonna get this apple cut up. So my husband and I, when we were in London this summer, um, we discovered that uh, they sell their natural peanut butter in a squirt bottle, which we had never seen before in Israel or in America. So I actually, um, the peanut butter we had used there, I took the bottle back with us washed it out and we've been using it for natural peanut butter here and it's so satisfying um, and just much easier to use natural pre peanut butter which is like kind of liquidy and it's like hard to get over everything um, on these types of things. So I really love apples um, and when I'm at school like I'll just eat an apple plain. Um, personally like when I have the time for it I prefer a chopped apple and I also I have like a whole method of how I like really like it to just make it really yummy and also much more satiating. So I pour a little bit of lemon juice. I discovered that because when I was a kid, you know, you always have like apples for school in the lemon juice. And I realized that I actually prefer the flavor of that more. Um, then I sprinkle on a little bit of cinnamon. And this isn't for a video. This is actually how I prefer to eat my apples when I'm at home. And then um, you just shake the squirtable peanut butter. And you got a whole beautiful peanut butter squirt all across. Um, and it's really, really yummy. Highly recommend. This is the finished product. I'm eating this now. This is exactly what I needed right now. Typically for lunch, um, I deliberately make food for Shabbat that I can eat over the course of the week and that my husband as well can eat over the course of the week. We really don't mind leftovers, but I try to do leftovers that like I know I'll enjoy both as Shabbat food um, and also as um, like foods that can kind of be thrown together and make a meal for the week. Let's see what we've got in the fridge. This is what our messy fridge is looking like. So I mustered up some leftover salad from Shabbat from the fridge as well as um, some leftover chickpeas that were like were originally in the salad and then I also served whatever was left of those roasted chickpeas separately. So I'm going to throw a bunch of those roasted chickpeas into the bowl. The salad um, is a little soggy obviously, it's a Monday and um, this was all made for Shabbos. 
So I don't really mind eating like soggy salad, but I definitely need some like fresher stuff in there with it. Don't judge me, I'm a college student. Like I eat what's around, um, even though I'm married and kind of more adult, like we definitely, you know, we respect our bodies, we make healthy food, but I definitely have like, I guess lower standards than uh, what I always perceive as like a real adult, if that makes sense. Um, so this is just some literally parsley and um, a little bit more spinach that's already in there. Um, I always pre-wash vegetables at the beginning of the week because um, for most vegetables, for most like leafy vegetables, um, unless you buy them specially wa washed or from like a, um, a greenhouse without bugs, um, any Orthodox Jew um, would wash typically their vegetables um, because we don't eat bugs as part of um, kosher standards. This week it was actually crazy um, because you very rarely do find bugs even though it is always a possibility but I actually did find bugs in one of my leafy vegetables and I felt like so validated um, that I always like do the checking process um, because for the one, like, I, I, like I'm always thinking to myself, do they really exist? Like, do the bugs really exist in this? Like, I don't know that much about agriculture. Um, is it just uh, too much of a stringency? And then you do occasionally find bugs. I found them a few times and I felt a lot better for checking. Typically for Shabbat, um, any, I deliberately will make like types of like meats or something that I would eat during the week. I make a lot of chicken um, too, and I think it, like it's a great way to top salads. Um, personally, I really like having grilled chicken on top of salads. Um, sometimes I'll also do like a schnitzel salad. I also made schnitzel this week, so probably that will be um, my meal for tomorrow. Um, and even sometimes I'll throw, like I'll just cut up a piece of like, um, like roasted chicken and do that as well. This is my lovely leftover salad. Um, I'm really actually trying hard to not make this more aesthetic um, or to put more things in that I wouldn't usually add um, just to like make myself feel like better for a video because I feel like when people post things online, it usually is like much more like aesthetic and attractive. Like the whole point of this video is that aside from the things that are really barred to us, kosher food and eating a kosher diet is pretty much like any other type of lifestyle or um, diet, I guess, uh, in the sense that like, you know, I, today I'm eating something a lot, um, I guess, less aesthetic and like, I'm perfectly happy with this. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to love eating the salad, but, um, but definitely like when I make food for Shabbat and maybe I'll do a video on that sometime, what my food looks like at that point in the process, I make like really, really pretty, beautiful dishes. Uh, and I think the same is true with any cuisine or just any like eating pattern. Sometimes I make really, really aesthetic, beautiful food. And other times I'm just looking to like get something in my system so I can continue studying like today. So I'm sitting down to eat and yes, it literally still is in the actual like large salad bowl for my table. Doesn't bother me. Um, and it's really good actually. It's a little salty because I think that's what happens when like a lot of the vegetables in here did wilt. Um, and so definitely, I don't know, it has like a bit more salt than I would like. But overall, this is yummy, um, balanced. It's going to get me through. Um, and I'll probably have a little bit of dessert after and we'll meet up for that. Especially when I eat a salad, um, I like to just have like a little bit of like dessert. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I need more of like a real carb type thing. So these are like little um, Rice crispy Bites that my husband got me into actually. Um, and they're parv, um, shockingly, because they're like really, really good. Parv is in non-dairy and non-meat. And um, I might have something else alongside this, but they're really, really yummy. So I finished up with studying for the day. Um, honestly, I really usually snack a lot more while I'm studying, but I guess today I was just like more in the work. Um, good for me than I usually am. Don't get me wrong, I still spent my fair share of procrastinating time. But um, I'm definitely hungry now. I also like just moved my body a little bit, did a little dance workout to Taylor Swift. I'm going to have some chicken soup that's left over from Shabbos. I feel like I am kind of seeming like I only eat traditional like classic Ashkenazi food today, which is unfortunate because the point of this video is to really show the diversity that can of Jewish eating experiences. Um, but yeah, this is what's happening to me today. Um, it's not always every day, but I'm also not going to change my routine and schedule for the um, for proving a video. Chicken soup from Shabbos, looking lovely and bubbling. So I'm feeling like I just want a little bit of extra carb in this. I think I'm gonna add like half a packet of ramen or something. Maybe I'll add the full pack if my husband wants to. 
My favorite part of ramen is when you have the leftover pieces in the bag and you can just eat them. It's like so fun and satisfying and crunchy. Also from life hack. So tonight I'm sticking with a pretty basic, just like chicken soup with ramen vibe. But um, at the end of the week, as you can see, it's a very large pot. Um, and it sometimes gets a little boring eating a lot of soup. Um, so sometimes I'll freeze it, but other times if there's just like a little bit of broth left and not much ve like vegetable or something. So I'll go like full on with this ramen idea and use that kind of like my, like the, what you would use the equivalent soup packet for, and then kind of give it a ramen bowl vibe. Um, maybe throw in like some additional like soy sauce or, um, other like sesame oil, teriyaki sauce, those type of things. Um, and as well as um, a few more veg uh, like vegetables, like I, if I have cabbage, I throw some of that in, stuff like that, and get more of like a ramen bowl as opposed to just like chicken soup with ramen. Mm, this is looking really yummy. Let's serve it up. Mm, soup actually looks amazing. I mean, I've had it a few times by now, um, both on Shabbat, and then we already had it once this week. But this looks really, really delicious, and I'm very excited that I added ramen. Just finished up two delicious bowls of this soup. Um, and now I'm ready just for some light snacking dessert, if you will. Um, let's rummage through my cabinets. So typically, I would likely just eat all of this stuff, um, either standing at my cabinet or at my fridge. But I figured for the sake of this, I'd just bring uh, some portion of it here. Um, and show you, but it's not like, uh, I just want to like be clear. It's not like me taking very, very small amounts of everything and like putting it in a container to restrict or anything like that. And just for the sake of the video. So I took out a chocolate cigar. I love these. Uh, if you grew up as an Orthodox Jew, or I don't know if this is a thing outside of the Orthodox Jewish world. This was like my go-to favorite from Mishalach Manot, um, which are like baskets that people send to each other. Mm. Okay, love that. Then we've got some dry mango. It's actually from Costco. My husband's parents brought it in and thoroughly enjoying our Costco size bag of it. We've got some grapes at the bottom. Um, I'm actually very excited about having grapes back in season. Um, living in Israel has definitely made me appreciate um, seasonal produce more because it's much um, it's much harder to get out of season produce than it is in America. And it's also much more expensive. Um, and so you kind of get used to eating things in season. And while like when you want strawberries at the wrong time of year or something like that, so it can be annoying. At the same time, I do like the feeling of connection with the land that it brings me. And also it's frankly better for the environment. So we've got some in season grapes, which I'm very excited to have. Finally, haven't had them in like months. Um, even though you can get them here for the record, they're just very expensive. And finally, we've got half a piece of baklava. I left the last half for my husband because he really loves this stuff. Mm, love this. I'm going to include some articles below if you would like to learn more about the actual nitty gritty of kosher diet and what those restrictions entail. Hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it was educational to some extent in seeing what one Orthodox Jewish woman eats in um, eats in a day ultimately jewish cuisine um, is not only jewish cuisine which is like traditional jewish foods rather it's also anything that can ultimately fall into the kosher spectrum so one night i could be eating a ball of matzo ball soup as i did this um as i did the night that i filmed in this video but another night i really could be eating a very standard american dinner or um or asian cuisine etc